Hey guys, uh, these series of videos will take you through subtopic 2.3 on quantities of molecules and ions. So these are our learning objectives for today's video. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, determining the molar mass of uh, elements and compounds that exist as molecules or lattices. And we'll also look at how to calculate the percentage composition of an element uh, in a compound. So to take you back a, a moment, uh, and we can recall this from 1.3 on quantities of atoms, that if we want to work out the relative atomic mass for an element, then we can simply find that on the periodic table. And we know that this directly corresponds to the molar mass. So for example, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12.01 AMU, and we can also say that the molar mass of carbon is then 12.01 grams per mole. Uh, we've got another example here as well, so we can see that the uh, mole mass of helium is 4.003 grams per mole, and its relative atomic mass would also be equal to that number there. And just keep in mind that in reality, only group A elements, or in other words, the noble gases, exist as individual atoms. So we're going to look at other examples from this. So we do know that most elements and all compounds do exist as molecules or lattices. The molar mass of an element or a compound considers the numbers of atoms um, or ions that are represented in a chemical formula. So if we just go through an example and we've got oxygen here, we know that oxygen, the molecules are made up of two oxygen atoms. Uh, so we write the chemical formula as O2. So we can see here that there are two oxygen atoms per molecule. Uh, we often call it a diatomic molecule because it consists of just two atoms. If we want to work out its molar mass, then we have to factor in the, uh, this idea that oxygen molecules are made up of two oxygen atoms. So when I work out the molar mass of oxygen, O2, it's equal to two times the number um, that's given on the periodic table, which is the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. And we know that that'll just get us 32.00 grams per mole. Our second example involves uh, a metallic substance, so magnesium. And we know that metallic substances have lattice structures. And you can just see that to the right here. And we know that all metals can be represented by their chemical symbol. So aluminium will be Al, gold will be Au. We know that magnesium is only made up of magnesium cations, and this is uh, surrounded by a sea of delocalized valence electrons. If we want to work out its molar mass, well, it's as simple as just working out the molar mass of a magnesium atom. And if we have a look at our periodic table, we get a value of 24.31, then the units are grams per mole. Our third and final example uh, looks at sulfuric acid. Uh, we know that sulfuric acid has the formula H2SO4, and sulfuric acid is a molecular compound. So this tells us the exact number and type of atoms in one molecule of sulfuric acid. So if we were to look at determining the molar mass of this, we'll have to factor in each of these different atoms that exist. So if we have a look at the molar mass, we can see that it's equal to two lots of hydrogen, and that's because H2SO4 consists of two hydrogens. We've got one sulfur, and then we've got four oxygens there. So we're just going to need to find the relative atomic masses of each of these three atoms. So we have hydrogen at 1.008, uh, sulfur at 32.06, and oxygen at 16.00. So we've expressed it in this form here. And if we just work this out, then we should end up with uh, an answer of 98.076 grams per mole. One more example, I almost forgot about this. Uh, so we've got potassium sulfide. So this is our last type of substance, I guess. And in this case, what we have is an ionic compound. So we know that potassium sulfide consists of a, a lattice structure. And what this tells us is the ratio of potassium to sulfide ions. So the formula is K2S, and that tells us that for every two potassium ions, we have one sulfide ion. When we work out the molar mass for potassium sulfide, we have two potassiums added to one sulfur, or sulfide. And when we look at our periodic table, we can work out the 
relative atomic masses of each of our elements here and here. And when we plug the numbers in, we end up getting a value of 110.26 grams per mole. The second part of this video looks at determining percentage composition of elements in compounds and how we can use molar masses of atoms to determine that. And uh, we'll get a chance to see how we can undertake these calculations. So the composition of a compound, which is otherwise known as the percentage composition, is usually expressed in terms of uh, percentage mass and we look at the percentage mass of a particular element in a compound. So the actual number of those atoms doesn't indicate what percentage of the mass uh, they may actually make up. We're going to go through two examples and the first example looks at uh, a substance called MSG or monosodium glutamate and this is a compound that can be used to flavor foods and help tenderize meats. We're given the, the molecular formula here and the question asks us to calculate the percentage mass of carbon in MSG. So to work out the percentage mass of carbon in MSG, uh, what we're going to do is firstly assume that we have one mole of the compound. And this is so that we can work out what the mass of each of these atoms are. And to do that, we're going to use this formula. So the percentage mass of carbon is equal to the total mass of the carbon atoms divided by the molar mass of the whole compound, which is MSG. And then we'll times that by 100 to convert it into a percentage. So this effectively explains the proportion of uh, the mass that is carbon over the total mass, which is of one mole, and then expressed as a percentage. Let's just work through this then. So the total mass of carbon, and what we can see is that there are five carbon atoms per molecule of MSG. So this is going to equal five lots of carbon divided by the molar mass of MSG. So that's going to be five lots of carbon, eight hydrogen, one nitrogen, and four oxygen, and then multiplied by 100. So to work out the mass of those atoms, we're just going to read the molar masses of each of these atoms. So for carbon, it's five lots of 12.01. And remember, we can just get that from our periodic table. And then this is divided by, so again, we've got five lots of carbon. I'm going to put this in brackets just to help separate each of these uh, elements, plus the eight hydrogens, so eight lots of 1.008, plus our nitrogen, and finally four lots of oxygen. Multiply that by 100. If we plug those numbers in our calculator, what we end up getting is 60.05 divided by 146.124 and multiplied by 100. And when we work that out, we end up getting a percentage of 41.10%. So that tells me that carbon makes up 41.1% of the total mass of this compound, even though it's only five carbon atoms that make up the whole molecule. So our second example is uh, about urea. So this is the molecular formula here. It's a nitrogen containing waste product that gets produced by our kidneys and it also gets excreted in our sweat and urine. So this question asks us to calculate the percentage mass of nitrogen in urea. Here is uh, what we call the structural formula. So you can see how the atoms are arranged. We're going to follow this in exactly the same way. So again, the first step is we're going to assume that we've got one mole of our compound. And when we work out the percentage mass of nitrogen, we're going to get this particular expression here. So the total mass of nitrogen atoms divided by the total mass of one mole of the compound, or in other words, the molar mass, multiplied by 100 to convert it into a percentage. Let's work through this in exactly the same way. What we can see, and this one's a bit trickier, so urea we can see has this formula. The number of nitrogens is actually two because we've got this N in brackets and then a two outside. So we're going to end up with two lots of nitrogen divided by, we'll start off with the carbon, so we've got one carbon, one oxygen, and back here we had two nitrogen, 
because inside brackets we have two hydrogens already, so we're going to need to multiply that by two, which gives us four hydrogens in total. So we've got two nitrogens and then four hydrogens. Multiply that by 100. We then just read the uh, molar masses or relative atomic masses from our periodic table. So with nitrogen, it's going to be two lots of 14.01. Zord divided by the mass of carbon, 12.01 plus oxygen, 16.00, two lots of nitrogen, plus four lots of hydrogen, multiplied by 100. So again, if we just work this out, we end up getting 28.02. This is divided by 60.062, .06, I believe, multiplied by 100. And finally, when we work out our answer, we end up getting 46.65% and this is recorded to four significant figures.